And welcome back to Flexible Games, where we are seeing our plane land. Welcome to Transport Fever. This is an amazing game. I've played so many hours of this off camera, you have no idea. I've got a sandbox game going right now. Uh, I still have income. Uh, I'm not doing like free things. I'm, you know, nothing is free. But uh, I think in that game, I'm at about year 2000 and about 2015, maybe 2016. And I've got uh, uh, something like, I don't know, 40 billion, something like that. Um, I basically wanted to see how big I can make a city and uh, kind of playing around with the mechanics a little bit. And uh, got my first skyscraper, which is cool. Uh, very cool. So we are... How many passengers does this boy have? 21. So a full load gives us how many... Mucho dineros here. He's got to pull in. 1.3 million. Boy, those are some expensive plane tickets. 21 people? Um, that's like 500 grand. That's like 500 grand a piece. <laughs> Those are some expensive plane tickets. <laughs> Alrighty, back to what we are doing. Okay, uh, I'd like to explain a little side effect of having trains uh, not uh, indicated. Like... Like my uh, system here, uh, come on, um, you know, I've got these pretty much hard-coded to construction materials. Uh, passengers, that's a, that's a given. Um, these are not hard-coded. So these carry logs, <coughs> these carry logs to my sawmill. We've covered this. Then they retool and they set themselves as planks and then they carry planks back here. So that is a very good benefit. Um, I can carry multiple different things on uh, the same line. Similarly, uh, that affects both directions. So you can see a side effect of this. There is a ton of food in this depot. Now, I'm not delivering food here. So how is food getting to this depot here? Well, it's a circuitous route. First of all, we have food being delivered right here. Not Custer, uh, Hartford. The Hartford Food Supply is picking up food here and delivering it up to Hartford, which is what we want. Now... We also have tools and machines being delivered to Hartford. But these are not set to a specific uh, cargo type because the tools and machine count varies from trip to trip. And sometimes you'll deliver more tools, sometimes you'll deliver more machines. And I didn't want to set up that um, hard-coded because you might run into problems. The, the side effect of that is the game recognizes that this line from this station to this station, this line from here to here is open game for boxcar cargo. So I have food being delivered up here and we've got lots of food. Uh, if you look at food, we are almost maxed on food. It's very, very hard to actually max it out. But we are very close to maxing it out. What do we do with all that extra food? Well, we're, we're basically offloading it onto this station. This train is picking up that cargo and delivering it to this station. This station is holding it. You can see food, Custer machines, 74 food. So my Custer line, way over here, this is where the final food will be delivered. You can see it delivered 18 food already. 
Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> that limits the number of machines and tools that we can deliver. So there are a couple ways that you can remedy this. One, you can set up the box cars to be very specific ratios. <clears throat> so you can say, I want three tools uh, or four tools and four machines, just 50 50 it. And so they will only ever transfer tools and machines. Uh, a second way to do it is double up your route to the destination. That way you're not losing out on any cargo that you're going to deliver. Because we've got plenty, if we look at Custer, we've got plenty of tools and plenty of machines to deliver as well as the food. So I would like, if I can sneak it in here, to double up the line going to Custer somewhere. Uh, we have a whole bunch of these that I don't think we need. We've got plenty of plenty of signals on that doubled up line, and I think that was a carryover from when that track crossed all of these. So I want to get rid of that because I want to double up Custer's line. And if we look, you can see Custer Tools. <coughs> Custer Tools, Custer Machines. I guess it would be so it's pink or purple or magenta or whatever color whatever name you want to give that color so it's on the outside here so we could double this line up all the way up to about this turn right here and run two trains on this line and make sure we've got all of that material because another side effect of that we're not delivering nearly enough tools and machines to Custer. We, need, we, can, we can do better. So let's double that line up. It's a simple matter of not upgrading. I want to double it up. Pick a spot that's sort of out of the way and drag, drag it out. Trying to keep your speeds as well as can be. Too much slope. Let's dial it back a little bit. So there is one side going that way. Now let's pick a spot over here. Uh, let's go past this bridge because I don't want to deal with that bridge. So we're going to come out here and really try to stretch it. Because these trains are going to be coming back this direction, and I want I want them to be able to go as fast as possible right there. And the rest of this is your standard standard track here. Uh, I'd really like to redo this whole thing in here because I don't like this big hump right there. But I will worry about that at a later time. And do we have the clearance to go under? We do. Fantastic. Let's go under or over that tunnel. One of the reasons I wanted to do a tunnel there because I knew we were going to run more lines through here. Uh, and it doesn't like that crossing. So we are going to get rid of that road for now. look at see that hump right there I want to get rid of that uh, let's pause it so the game doesn't freak out on me so we're gonna continue that up through there a nice much more gentle slope through there and now with our road we're gonna have to basically spend a little bit of money too much slope train alignment collision really stretch this bridge out okay 
everybody's happy. Let's connect these two together. Okay, so if we look at our lines, you can see it's just picking the shortest path. Now, when we go through and, ch and add signals to this, as soon as we add this one, I think. Nope, yep, there it goes. Now it's detecting that that's a double lane, so it's going to split the traffic. So we want to do the same on this side. Uh, let's get a little closer to that. All right, so now that we know that is a two-way, let's uh, add a few more signals in here. I'm going to add one way up here because we're only have two trains running on this, so we're not going to need umpteen number of signals. So let's uh, space these out a little bit more. I mean, you could run three trains. You can run as many trains as you have blocks in between. So there's a block, there's a block, there's a block, there's a block. So, you know, if you have 10 blocks, you can run 10 trains. You can even, I think you can even run 11 trains. Uh, but to be on the safe side, you could run 10 trains. Never had to actually run 10 trains on a line before. I think the most I've ever had was five. Okay, so we now are doubled up on Custer machines. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, that's heart. Custer machines, uh, we're gonna change this color so machines, I like to do a darker cyan color. Um, same with the trains. <clears throat> I've gotten into the habit now of uh, running uh, my lines the same color as my trains. So I kind of want to continue with that if I can. Uh, why are you going to Hartford North? You have tools and machines. You need to turn around. And you now have a free path. So you can see he maxed out on machines and tools. Uh, but he didn't pick up any of the food. So we want to remedy that here. I think we could. We don't have a depot on that line at all. I could do some shenanigans with this depot kind of moving the track over and merging it into here, but I'd rather not. No, that's really the only and best option that I've got right now. I really don't want to interfere with this steel line that's coming down. So if I drag this over like that, Yeah, try, try doing that with Train Fever. No way. <clears throat> and this line, this steel line, doesn't, doesn't connect to this one. So I'm not going to get any steel trains using that line. If I would have crossed this over to this line and then crossed this over to this line, you could get your steel switching over to the different platform and I don't want that. So let's buy using our dark darker cyan color a quick train. Uh yeah, a quick train. And box car we're not going to set the items. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 Eight. Eight should be good. And we want to set line on Custer Machines. And the steel has gone through, so this should be able to pull out. Now technically this, this engine is a passenger service engine. If you look at the description, it marks it as passenger, but it's got a decent rating. 
uh, on power, and it's got really good speed. And speed is the name of the game in this game. Well, it's not the name of the game. <clears throat> but the faster you can deliver things, the more money you make in the end. <coughs> oh, this weather has turned colder and it's just nightmare on my health. Okay, so this should actually pick up a little bit of food as well as the rest of those machines and everything. Not too bad, look at that. Almost filled it up. Now it's waiting here. It's sitting here waiting because the game automatically tries to um, time your deliveries to be right spot on. So this is now leaving the station. So this one is now leaving the station. So it tries to distribute your line. And it does that a couple ways by, by staying at a station a little bit longer. And it doesn't do it <clears throat> all at once. It can take a while to get those things distributed um, because it's a, you know, a little bit longer wait every time. And eventually your line is really well balanced. So we have this oil going into this station and this oil going into this station. So those are really distributed well. If I added another train onto this station, they would be out of sync for a while. But eventually, <clears throat> you would get it to where you would have one in this station, one in this station, and one like somewhere in the middle. Um, and then it would distribute the, the, the timings pretty, pretty accurately. Um, I've found the thing that interrupts that the most, <clears throat> if you look in your cities and your bus services, um, again, it tries to distribute the buses equally around a city. But the thing that interrupts that is the traffic in the city itself. That can have a major impact on how um, clumped up all of your services are. And it still tries to separate them. So you might, if, if there was a whole bunch of traffic in this area, you might get a, a clump of buses behind here, but it still tries to delay how fast they go out. So um, just don't get frustrated if you get buses and they sit at a station for a while, even though there's a whole bunch of buses ready to go because it's trying to distance itself from the one that just left uh, on the same line. Uh, so. You might have, you know, three yellows in a row, um, but it's not going to just spit those out one at a time um, right after another. It's going to delay them um, and space them out a little bit more. Uh, so don't be surprised if when the traffic really hits your city hard, you uh, kind of rebound. Uh, you, you see a whole lot of clumping and then spacing and then... Because the game is always trying to distribute your vehicles and your trains and your planes and your boats. It's trying to make sure everything is distributed properly. So here we have the first deliver delivery of the new train. It's only four months old and it's almost full of material. And again, I'm going to need to swap these vehicles out here. We have the new Peterbilt truck. There's seven million dollars on its debut voyage uh, for goods. Now, it's probably not going to be full the next time it comes through. Just because um, it's kind of a fluke sometimes when it fills up. Uh, now, one other thing, um, because the late game in this game is a little uh, hard to keep up with sometimes, because your cities grow so big, 
that you need to deliver a lot of goods into it in order to keep it keep it satisfied. Uh, and the late game trucks to do that. So we have, you know, this station is delivering to quite a few things automatically. So it's it's just dumping all the goods in there. But the stuff that it can hit, you know, uh, if we go to our settings here. So when I deliver food here, it can't deliver food up into here. So I need trucks to deliver it uh, to this spot. And I've got a cargo set up right here to deliver that because this covers a whole lot of other area. Um, and I could put like a, a small station here and deliver even more. Now, late game, <clears throat> you might have cities. And, and like I said, my sandbox game, I have a city that's over 4,000 people. Now, it demands over 1,000 food, 1,000 construction material, um, you know, 1,000 fuel. It's, it's wanting all that a year. So when I try to deliver uh, all of that material, my truck system backs up. Uh, there is so much material that I need to deliver into a city. And the late game truck, uh, the not, not the Peterbilt. Uh, if you look at the Peterbilt, let's look at freight, Peterbilt. Okay, this thing has 19 capacity, which is good. Mid-game, where we are now, 19 capacity, really, really good. Uh, it's uh, way better than the Sudabaker. It's a lot bigger, so it takes up a lot more road space. Um, but late game, 19, delivering 19 at a time is just not good enough. It is uh, not at all good enough. Um, so what I did is I went into the very late game last truck that you get, the Freightliner, and I essentially modded it to deliver more cargo. Um, and again, with the running costs, I kept the price um, auto, auto balance, so it's way more expensive to buy. But the running costs, I think I set it like... I forget what I set it at. I'd have to look at the file. Um, but the running costs are a little lower because uh, if I kept the running costs auto balanced, it would essentially never make money because I have a cargo, uh, it can hold 50. So we have the Peterbilt, which can hold 19. The, the Freightliner can hold 50. And it's the only way that I have been able to really satisfy a city's needs uh, and delivering all of that cargo around the city because all of these all of these commercial areas out here these are not getting delivered to at all this can't cover it and I can keep that up this can't cover it so all of these blues that you see in here none of these are getting delivered to none of my goods are getting out there so I'm gonna need another uh, stop out here to try to deliver to all of these commercial. And it's the only way to really get full coverage. And that demand that you see, the, the difference, is because I'm not able to deliver to all of those commercials. So if you have a building of commercial, you'll never hit 100% unless you cover that building. So you might have one way outside of town or way on the edge of town that you're not hitting and you're wondering why you're not hitting 100% even though you may be pushing you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of materials in, well, it's because you're not actually covering it with a depot. And you can deliver to these little depots here. So, you know, I, I built this before I realized, yes, you can indeed deliver to these stops. So I'm tempted to remove this stop and replace it with just a single passenger depot and then update my lines because uh, it's wasting space and I could have a whole bunch of buildings in here uh, giving me even more revenue. So think about that uh, when you're planning your truck routes. But that'll have to do it for this episode. So I thank you for watching and I will see you next time.